Good morning and welcome to a very special DevOps edition of our Integration Developer News Executive Webinar Series. This is Vance McCarthy, your moderator for today's event, entitled Software Defined Disruption. And today we're very pleased to be joined by our special expert presenter, Ken Owens, Chief Technology Officer of Cloud Infrastructure Services at Cisco Systems. Ken, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. You know, as many of you know, DevOps is attracting a lot of attention lately, and in large part, this is because of the promise it has to increase collaboration and feedback between Dev and Ops. But as we'll hear from Ken Owens, DevOps, when done right, offers an even bigger and more impactful promise, ways to get more and better applications out to the business faster and smarter. If learning how DevOps can make good on this promise for your company and your career, the next 15 minutes or so will be well worth your time, I promise you. Just a few words about our speaker. Ken is one of the top executives at Cisco, leading some major commitments to DevOps. Many of Cisco's biggest DevOps investments, in fact, for projects, partnerships, and pilots all cross his desk at some point. His agenda overlaps your wants to deliver easier and more reliable ways to capture these DevOps benefits, not just for your own developer team, but across the life cycle and to the business. He's also driving a new innovative hybrid DevOps, which will speed a new generation of apps and data, which now arise from cloud, mobile, IoT, big data, and more. He'll share some roadmap details on that where he can. And most notably, he's got a DevOps-focused program that's happening at Cisco Live, part of the DevNet track at Cisco Live, and more exciting news on how you can participate with all the experts that will be there and the programs on tap at the end of this session. And now, Ken, lots of exciting things to cover. Let me turn it over to you and talk to us about software-defined disruption. All right, thank you. What I want to do today is talk about how there's a need to look at how to boost our DevOps practices. And what I mean by this is if you think about your existing processes, it takes weeks to create a development environment. There's typically a lot of cost, a lot of red tape, a lot of working with your business IT partners to kind of get an environment that you can use. And then when you get that environment, it's not a production environment. It's different than prod, and it causes a lot of issues when you go from development environment to the prod environment. And your testing that you're doing isn't always accurate. This takes weeks to get your code from your desktop to the production environment, and it causes a lot of frustration, and it's slowing the business down in general. The other issues that we're trying to look at are things like versioning and making updates to your code over time with all the different systems that you're connecting to, it becomes way too difficult to sort of get that versioning piece in place and get it done correctly. You know, the last couple of things are important to remember too and that developers can't get access to their backend services and a lot of different internal systems that they rely on and that we rely on when we to do our job are not easily available to us to consume as an API or as a service. And it basically makes it hard for us to innovate and do our jobs when we have the state job that is always kind of connecting these dots together. And what we're seeing in the developer, in the developer aspect of the software defined developer challenge is there are many different services that you need to either mock up or you need to figure out how to connect to as you're developing your application today. These services consist of multiple different technology stacks that require a user to learn and understand the details and the nuances of each of these stacks, and they run on multiple different storage backends. When you move to the build standpoint, there's a bottleneck in most SDLC flows today, and that bottleneck causes delays and endless testing cycles that require you to wait to kind of get in and retest your code again. There's also this idea that the flexible or dynamic build slaves that cause it you to have dependencies that you have no ability to really connect into. On the deploy side, how do you ensure that when you deploy into the production environment that you're able to kind of make sure that you're connecting to the right services, that you have the right load balancing and security configuration set up? And, and this is really compounded by the problem of multiple tech stacks and underlying services that are available in the different locations you may want to deploy to. That's a little bit of kind of the challenges we see, but to kind of talk on the positive side, in reality, software is eating the business. If you do DevOps right, as we alluded to in the beginning, 
it creates tremendous value and it disrupts the business models that exist in the industry. It also enables you to create not just some value for your business, but increasingly more and more value for your business. And basically every company today is becoming a software company is what we're seeing. In addition to that, as business leaders, it's important that we recognize the value that developers are bringing to our business. And we're consistently looking for ways to recruit and empower and unleash that potential within our developers. As an example, we looked at this state of DevOps survey that was done last year. And for, for high-performing IT organizations that are more reliable, they're getting twice the success rate and 12 times the faster mean time to recovery. In addition to that, they are winning by having twice as likely to exceed profitability, market share, and productivity goals. And they're also 50% higher market capitalization growth over a three-year span. And so there's real value for the business. When you think about that value, it's important to sort of come back and kind of look at what are the obstacles that you face every day. And there's a lot of existing methodologies in place today, and what we hear a lot of times from developers is that their enterprise managers are telling them DevOps is only for startups. And a lot of you guys are overwhelmed. You're working extra hours today to try to make things work. and you're not really able to kind of add more things to it. Your boss doesn't get it. The rules for the software exist for good reasons, and you should just adopt the way we've always done, I've done software development. And there's also usually this unicorn. There'll never be a unicorn, so why bother? These obstacles need to be sort of overcome quickly because, again, the value to the business of getting the software out quicker is what DevOps is really all about. 55% of the companies that have surveyed are practicing DevOps today, and these are large enterprises. If you look at Nordstrom, they increased their feature velocity by 40%, which means they were getting 40% more things done than they could before. And when you think about what it takes to get on board, it really comes down to kind of looking at what type of a platform do you need. And a lot of development today is being done on a local laptop or a local desktop and being ported to different systems during the testing process. And so when you think about that and we think about what it takes to sort of bring these different environments forward, we've been thinking about this term called hybrid DevOps. And hybrid DevOps, similar to hybrid cloud, is really about creating that business value to leverage what you're doing today inside your firewall, if you will, but be able to develop and then deploy that across multiple different environments, kind of as a platform as a service. And at Cisco, we're building the internet of clouds, what we're calling the intercloud. And the goal is to really enable this hybrid DevOps platform for the internet of everything. And the goal is to really build these platforms that will enable rapid development for the billions of devices that are going to be connecting together, is to kind of create this private develop private and build and deploy everywhere so you have no vendor lock-in, you have no cloud lock-in, you don't have to compromise the integrity of your software, you don't have to compromise the locations and the security that you need around those deployments. We're also basically saying you need to be able to leverage the frameworks of your choice. So giving you options, giving you the capability to leverage your existing frameworks, to leverage some of the new cloud-native development frameworks, we really want that choice to be yours. We're also building through a CI CD flow, so it's not just a lift and shift, if you will, it's kind of the term that's used in the industry. You're not consistently developing and then lifting and shifting that code somewhere else. You're able to continuously integrate and continuously deploy, leveraging our platform tooling, or you're able to leverage your own custom, bring your own sort of CI CD flow with packaging and versioning. So we're tackling some of the major concerns and issues that software-defined disruption has today. When you get to the deploy component, in addition to not having to have cloud lock-in or compromise, you're able to actually do service discovery and then automate that service deployment so that you have high availability across that service deployment. So you're not relying on understanding the availability zones and how you should write your application to be more highly available. You're able to take advantage of the underlying frameworks to ensure that your application is highly available. You're also able to manage all of this from a single interface across your private and multi-cloud environments. 
And so instead of having to try to manage and figure out which connection method you need to use or which token you need to use to log into these different systems, you're able to have a single interface to let you manage your application as an application, not as a bunch of infrastructure components. And then the last thing that we've enabled is collaboration across your organization and across communities. And this is a big part of kind of the Internet of Everything platform is we really feel like the connectivity that's needed and the interaction that's needed between developers is so important that we wanted to ensure that you could collaborate very easily. So what does this sign and start to look like? What we're calling this is Project Shift. As you can see, it's based on a, a microservices or container architecture where you're able to build your services, you're able to deploy leveraging the Cisco Cloud, the little arch of the San Francisco Bridge is in that picture of deploy, and then you're able to run smoothly. We are going to basically deploy this and enable this at Cisco Live. We're going to have it available for the hackathon. We invite you to come and use the product, give us feedback on the product. You can meet the entire engineering team that built Project Shift. And we're basically providing a way to GitHub for free and then trade private repos for free. We're offering those for everyone who tries and uses the platform. The picture on the right is what I was kind of mentioning before. What I think is so disruptive about software-defined development of hybrid DevOps is the ability to manage your application as an application. And so in this picture, you can see that there's different regions that have been deployed. And on the right-hand side, you can see those regions in terms of containers and the availability and the services that are running on those containers. And we're measuring things like response time and throughput and errors. So it's, it's much more focused on the application availability and application performance and meeting your business objectives and not so much about worrying about the cloud infrastructure you're deploying to. We're really excited about that, and in general, we're just excited about DevNet, and we really want to invite you to come to DevNet to get your dev on at Cisco Live, or if you can't come to Cisco Live, we would really encourage you to participate remotely. There are a lot of core cool sessions going on. I'm hosting a session on application microservices. There's another session that Dave Ward is hosting on APIs and how APIs are transforming networking and IT. There's a lot of different containerization and Docker type of, of sessions going on. In addition to the sessions and being able to meet some of the leaders in the industry, we also have some very core cool hands-on capabilities there. So like I mentioned before, there's a hackathon. We also have learning labs where you can deploy your first application to the Cisco InterCloud with Project um, Shift. You can also develop and deploy an application to the InterCloud with OpenShift and Cloud Foundry integrated to Project Shift. And you can even write your first MapReduce job on the Cisco InterCloud with Hadoop. In addition to the learning labs, we have classroom instruction where, again, you can learn more about Project Shift and more about some of the big data and data analytics aspect of our platform. And we're going to have new rollouts for Spark and for Project Shift. So really, you know, really hope to see you there. Really want to invite you to attend and come participate and collaborate with us. In addition to that, this discussion we're having is not just about where Cisco is going. We feel like this is a real movement. The industry has really made a decision to pivot down this microservices architecture approach. DevOps is no longer in the shadows. It's out in the runtime and the execution needs of the business today. And we're not doing this alone. We're partnering with some of the leading DevOps tool providers, partnering with HashiCorp, Clicker, Nermata, Red Hat, OpenShift, and the Cloud Foundry Foundation. We really have an intense focus on the application and the developer service design. So we built this whole project shift as a whole end-to-end -end experience for a developer to go from concept to a running application in less than five minutes. And we have exciting new community projects that we would invite you to come build with us. In addition to project shift, we have this whole microservices infrastructure that we've open sourced. And we also have container networking that we're focused on how do we improve container networking? How do we make networking and application-centric networking part of a microservices infrastructure? And we're also you know, leading some standards work in Congress as part of the OpenStack series of standards around application intent or policy intent. And so here's a couple of links to come and connect in. We invite you to do a proof of concept with us and to contribute to this effort. 
is a very exciting time to be in development right now, and I want to thank you very much for your time. I know it's critical and important for your time to be used wisely, and I just want to thank you for that and appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come and talk today, man. You know, Ken, that was a great overview of both the uh, the dynamic uh, world we're in with DevOps and now hybrid DevOps, as well as what Cisco is doing to bring together a cool and innovative ecosystem. And I wonder, speaking of being able to take advantage, for a developer that might feel like he totally gets the value of DevOps, but he's an individual, he's maybe outnumbered, you mentioned some of the obstacles. What are the benefits that a sole developer or a small developer team could get from coming to the DevNet portion of Cisco Live that would maybe help speed the DevOps religion back at his company? Well, that's, that's an excellent question. And there, there are several um, things that I, I would recommend. First of all, the classroom instruction is, is excellent. It will give you a chance to talk with some of the leaders in the industry and, and kind of get the ability to pick their brain and be able to look at what are some of the options that they've used in their companies to bring DevOps for real? What, what small projects did they start off with? The other piece is sort of the hands-on learning lab. So if you don't have time to kind of sit in, a, in an instruction setting, be able to sit down at, at a, you know, a computer and go through some of the learning labs and see how easy it is would give you kind of the ability to jumpstart maybe a project when you get back to the office. And I think that's that's really the, the two takeaways I'd want to have with this question. One is start something at Cisco Live that you can then continue when you go back to the office. And the second thing is to start with something small and, and see how quickly and how, how efficiently you're able to execute against that. My philosophy is that winning the development argument is always by running code. You don't ever win arguments by PowerPoint. And so... If you can get some code up and running quickly, you can show the value and the benefit of doing it in this new methodology, then in most cases, seeing that demo is going to be the main difference. Really excellent, really excellent value there. You know, you also mentioned the idea that Cisco is not doing this by itself. It's it's in a movement with not only vendor partners, but open standards and, and uh, multiple cloud uh, service providers. The list of the DevOps thought leaders that you've got in the program that are going to be either giving mini keynotes or really excellent hands-on sessions, it seemed very impressive to me. Can we spend a minute or two talking about your uh, Meet the DevOps thought leaders? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's it's a very important part, and it, it also ties into the collaboration aspect that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, developers are not usually um, social when it comes to outside events, but they're very social when it comes to developing. And and one of the best ways to, to sort of learn um, and ask questions that you may not know exactly how to move forward on is to meet with some of the leaders in the industry and so we wanted to bring those leaders into one place, to bring them into the DevNet zone, make them available in, in different settings, um, including just sitting at the coffee bar so that you have a chance to just kind of walk up to them and, and talk to them casually without having to set up an appointment. We also have meeting rooms, and so if you're really interested in meeting um, someone from HashiCorp or from you know, OpenShift, we can actually help you schedule some time to meet with them one-on-one -on -one to ask whatever specific questions you may have for your environment and your situation that you're working on. The, um, the types of leaders that we have at the conference are, are people who have, have done this in multiple companies. Uh, they're, they're individuals that know um, how to do this and why you want to do this. And so it's important to, to take advantage of that when and where you can, for sure. We have a slide up here that mentions some of the uh, the keynoters at your show, and I'm sure that there are developers out there that recognize these names, uh, Mitchell, Adrian, Gene, and, and Damon. And the point I wanted to let you make to the developer community is that not only are they uh, folks just going to be at an event to speak for two or three days and then they go back to their own corner, so to speak, but they're actually collaborating with you deeply. And the coolest part is we are opening this up to, to everyone, so anyone who's listening to this, this, this message, we would like you to join us. We really want to make this a, a community effort, and and we're part of the community for that reason, right? We, we've asked Gene, and we've asked Damon, and we've asked 
you know, Mitchell to work with us and partner with us because we do want to, to foster that collaboration and be part of a bigger community than just Cisco. You know, Ken, this has been a great session. One last uh, kind of big picture before you go. Uh, you mentioned that the idea that Cisco is creating this platform for the Internet of Everything to enable uh, what you call the hybrid DevOps. Very compelling story there. Just to be clear about the individual developer uh, agenda, they don't have to be an Internet of Everything uh, project or an IoT project or an Apple Watch project to get some real benefit out of what you're building here. This is a very agnostic uh, approach to Absolutely. DevOps, correct? It, it is definitely a very agnostic approach, and it's it's sort of a a abstraction layer. I know we that term gets overused quite a bit, but it's it's truly an abstraction layer of of interfacing and frameworks to allow you to develop your application in the manner that you need to develop it to be successful as quickly as you can. Excellent, excellent. Ken Owen, CTO of uh, Cisco's Cloud Infrastructure Services, a really great overview of the session. And just a reminder, too, to our uh, attendees here, give us the details on the event, Ken, if you would. Yes, the, the event is on June the 5th, San Diego, California. The hackathon is the weekend before, so it's a 48-hour hackathon. And there are um, there's pretty good substantial prize money for the hackathons, and we're going to have uh, you know information and links to uh, to that registration information. It's really really a super deal. If anything else, it really underscores Ken's uh, message here about reaching out to the community and wanting to get you involved. It's just on that the Explore Pass is only forty nine dollars, so it's it's quite a value for for three days. Amazing, amazing. Ken Owens, again, thanks again for your time. Really great session and a really good overview of uh, not only what Cisco is incubating for the future of DevOps, but how they're getting their deliverables out there and looking for developer community. Really excellent session. Thank you for your time today. It was a great session.